Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of hype about Lost Ark. Well, we are going to be comparing Lost Ark and ESO in today's video. Now, I've only been able to play for the past five or six hours or so since this came out early. If you buy the bronze pack on the 8th. Now, this is a free to play game which will come out on the 11th. But if you want early access, you got to buy the bronze pack, which is well worth my opinion, guys. This has been the most fun I've had starting out in a new MMO. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty scared about jumping into a new MMO and giving it a go. But guys, this is really fun. And ESO honestly needs to take notes from Lost Ark because they know what's going on. They have all the quality of life. They have all the in-game guides. They have video guides on everything you ever need to know about this game. It's only been on a couple of years. So, Zoss, take notes. So before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. The best way to support the channel is with a simple like and sub, but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute chad, we also have YouTube memberships enabled, which give you access to custom emojis, access to private Discord channels, as well as shout outs in each and every single one of my videos. And we also have Patreon, which includes PvP coaching. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, a little bit stuck, all the links are down in the description below and now let's get into the video now let me show you guys what happens when you go to create a new character so there are 15 different classes so you have the warrior mage martial artist so there are demos of each you can also go into advanced class categories so within the assassin class there's what's called Deathblade and shadow hunter for example now what you can do with these classes let's go ahead and you know customize it we'll go with you know, whatever you know, niche Unreal Engine 3 presets that we have. So uh, it really doesn't matter. So it gives you a, a nice little character model, it shows you all the controls, even the cute little email drive, but uh, we're we're not gonna worry about any of that. We're just gonna go to apply changes. Uh, we're just gonna type in uh, whatever, because this is just going to be an example to show you guys the new player experience. Now this blew me away. This drew me in instantly. And I really hope that ESO adopts this somehow in their entry level to new players because they keep harping this whole oh, yeah, ESO fan base. We need new players, yada yada. This games have been out for seven years, but never will they ever have something like this. And if the Elder Scrolls Online could possibly incorporate something like this into their new player structure, I think this would be an amazing and amazing addition. So we are going to uh, go ahead and skip. This is like the prologue to your class kind of explains now. This is what drew me in instantly. So this is a uh, uh, overhead point click. If you ever play Dota, League, Smite, um, this is how you'll move your character. Now, check this out. So even right out the gate, it kind of gives you all of these uh, interaction screens. Now, here's the two different classes you can go down. You can do a Death Blade, which uh, in the thumbnail, or you can do a Shadow Hunter. So for example, let's pick Death Blade. And what you can do, you can do this class tester. So there's a preview for all the skills, kind of give you an idea of what you're getting into. Uh, this is kind of a bad video, right? It, it doesn't really, it, it just kind of looks like a button mashing game, but, but it's much, much more than that. So let's go into the class tester. Now, if you, uh, it's telling you how to do your basic attacks, all this fun stuff. Now, you can actually spawn monsters. So let's go ahead and spawn monsters, uh, wherever they be. And you can try out all your abilities all the best, you know, whatever that you want uh, for your class, even before you play it, which is really, really freaking awesome. Uh, this is kind of like a point click system. Uh, you do need to get used to uh, quick casting if you guys are unfamiliar. This is my first time playing this class, so I don't know how to fire any of these spells, but uh, you guys get it. So you have this meter right here that also it tells you how to hold your you know, abilities and all that stuff. So you have like combo skills, you have point click spills, spells, excuse me, you have cone abilities, uh, you have combo abilities. Um, there's, there's a lot to it. You have a dash, which is kind of like that right there is the equivalent to dodge roll. Um, each uh, hero or whatever you call it class has like their own different turn rates and things like that. And uh, you have this arcane meter right here. So look what happens when you uh, fill up uh, this arcane meter. And all this will populate right here. For example, on the sorcerer, which I can show you on my, uh, uh, my do see right here. Attacking creates death orbs. Press the Z to activate death trance and use every powerful skill. So if we activate we hit Z and now we are in what's called death trance and then this allows all your abilities to pretty much be on steroids and you get different combos and you know, more damage and you know cool down your abilities and let that shit reduce so 
Um, it's really, really cool just to be able to preview all the classes and see what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, if you are spending hours and hours and hours playing a class and come to find out you don't like it, well, you just waste your time and it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and quit out here. We're going to uh, swap characters to uh, my main uh, level 24 right now. We picked the Sorceress. Um, I'm picking most of these based off of PvP. Now, when it comes to PvP, there is an in-game PvP. It's a 3v3 arena, kind of like a deathmatch, just like a World of Warcraft. And it is kind of esports ready type of thing. So if you're really into competitive gameplay, this is definitely going to be for you. Elder Scrolls Online definitely does not have any sort of competitive play. Whereas this game will, it's pretty nutty. Go check out some of the PvP videos. Uh, just, just, just a simple YouTube Google search and you guys are going to see some amazing, amazing results. Um, just the sheer skill and outplay potential you have with the classes is is phenomenal. So character model, of course, I made this wee boot chick. There's no boob slider, unfortunately. Um, ESO has a semi boob slider, but uh, that's not here nor there. But but yeah, here's the sorcerer class. Now let's talk about the entry. So again, we're going to be harping on this a lot. Now Elder Scrolls has a very very crappy intro to your characters and professions and everything you need to know about the game. So let me show you what is incorporated into this so let's go over to our books for example there is a guide here about cards so you can build your own deck uh, decks are kind of equivalent to eso sets you get set bonuses for in your decks there, there, there's thousands of cards and decks you can combine so you go to the guide look at this there is a video in game on how the card system works and this is true throughout the entire game these in-game guides and something you don't have to go Google for, you don't have to YouTube, it's all here. And it brings it up in a palatable format throughout the game. Now there's a lot of stuff I haven't even unlocked because I have not progressed further enough in the story. And quite frankly, there's a lot of systems in the game and it's very, very overwhelming. But having the systems in this way is very palatable and it's easy to digest and not get overwhelmed and stressed out because when you hop into a new MMO, you're going to get stressed out to buy all the different systems and things you got to learn and crafting and expertise and strongholds. And there's so much we could talk about in this video. I'm going to try to keep it um, as short as possible. Um, the inventory is very much like a World of Warcraft, if you guys are familiar with that. Now, go down here to the bottom right. Look, there's guides for literally everything. Elder Scrolls does have something similar to this, but they don't have videos. And it's just a simple help guide. You have to type in keywords to know what to look for. Well, you don't have to with this, okay? And one more thing I wanna point out, this is the training room. This is gonna be very similar to the character creation screen, but if at any point you wanna go through and just hone some of your skills, look at this. There's the entire guide of how to play your class. Um, it's absolutely amazing. You got movement skills, uh, stand up, like all these guys are here. The advanced, you have to unlock at level 50 because there's a lot of things. Again, once you hit level 50, that become available to you. But there are guides here on literally everything. This training room is something I'm definitely going to delve into because I quite frankly don't know what uh, any of this means. I don't know what a stand up skill is. I, I don't know what a specialty skill is. I haven't unlocked any toggleable abilities. So this will be something fun to learn as well. And again, Zenimax, take notes. This is amazing. Why is this not in your game? So when it comes to trade skills, again, there's guides, there's literally everything you need to know. Now, one thing I would like to point out if I can find it here in a uh, reasonably quick fashion. Um, we need Alt-D, it has literally everything you can think of in this view history, uh, gifts, strongholds. It tells you all about strongholds and structures um, that you can possibly attain in the game. So this is a really good tool to use. Unlike ESO, it, it's kind of wonky, but Lost Ark has such a organic type of flow to it it's just easy to understand it's very um intuitional right um compared to like final fantasy final fantasy for me really didn't bode too well just because a lot of the items and you know stuff you need to find out was just that uh, it, it, it it's it just felt weird right and um, the questing is a setup um uh, very similar now this is controller compatible but i've opted for mouse and keyboard it's it's just way better in my opinion there's a teleport system very similar to uh, the Elder Scrolls Online. You just simply pick a node and you teleport to it. And if you have the uh, the packs, you can get, actually get this for free. The area is absolutely massive, so there's plenty and plenty to do. Again, this game has been out for a couple years, but this is the first time it's been released here in the US. So 
there's a lot to unfold and there's already a lot of good videos and guides on you if you want to completely power level but i would highly suggest doing so because you kind of miss you know the purpose of the game now this is the best icon ever Zoss, please take notes of this there is a welcome challenge up here so uh, when you click on it in the top right hand corner uh make sure this is even recording yeah so we type on this in the top right hand corner this is a welcome challenge now this goes through every single guide that you can possibly have or unlock in the game now if you've not uh, completed it you can't claim the rewards obviously and this kind of gives you a chance to go back and see what you're missing because i'm a new player i'm still learning this as well i'm creating a video on it and the more information i find out for you guys i'll definitely let you know and this kind of shows you um, things you missed along the way so for example your trade skill and stronghold this is actually completely grayed out you can't even click on it until you unlock it in the story mode so this tells you about all of the, the lodging the hunting and this is kind of like your uh, crafting stuff uh, if you're a crafter that you'll need to upgrade your stronghold just a little bit about strongholds it is like the true in game this is your housing this is how you get cheaper mats if you've checked out world of warcraft the strongholds from world of warcraft they're garrisons i believe they're called um, this is essentially that um, but it gives you all kinds of bad benefits as well gear upgrades i haven't got to because i haven't unlocked it but you'll have to deal with engraving and true in-game stuff which is kind of confusing but again the game is structured in a way to where it's palatable um scheduled events uh we'll unlock this at higher item levels not collectibles this is like account wide stuff that you need to worry about um so there is like a uh, character item level uh kind of pull up here so each item has like its own item level yeah that's good and dandy but there's also account level stuff as well so you notice in the bottom left hand corner there's combat level which is your actual character level and then there's roster level now your roster level is a whole nother beast by itself which i have still yet to completely uncover but essentially your roster level is essentially everything you do on the entire account whether it be like sightseeing or boss kills or finding items or whatever and you use these to actually increase your skill points and there, there's amalgamation of things i am not even going to not going to act like an expert but you know let's talk about some of the skill systems now this is really cool this is kind of like a tree branching effect from like uh the, the burning crusade like world of warcraft now the elder scrolls online you have the spell and you have a morph well this has the spell you can upgrade the spell now you do have like a set amount of skill points that you to go out and grind and you find these seeds and that's a whole nother beast by itself we're not going to cover in this video but um it has a bunch of different spells and not only do you have these different spells but look at all the different morphs and trees you can go down so this is just level one. You have three different morphs you can choose. Level two, level three. So instead of having just one morph, you have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight different to every single skill. So you can spec your character out the way you want. And in addition to that, guys, let's kind of resurface it back to the whole deck ordeal, right? Alt C, Alt D. Okay, Alt C. There we go. So a decks offer a whole nother benefit system as well. So when going to equip, um, we'll say for example, uh, let's hover over. Uh, okay, so right here. So each one of these sets or decks, for example, you get bonuses for completing the sets, right? So all that's listed here. So that's really cool for you guys to kind of play around with. So you can really customize your build the way you want to. You don't have to play it the same way, right? Now, when it comes to the PvP, yeah, that's more of an in-game thing, which I've yet to uncover. And that's what I'm striving for. Uh, again, there are like 15 different classes and you can build them out in a lot of different ways. Now, I do know the in-game is pretty standardized and uh, no one really has a uh, benefit other than picking the classes and your team composition i know bards and knights uh, are really powerful so if you want to kind of get one geared up for that uh, definitely do so i know sources is definitely a tier there's all, all kinds of tier list rankings that you guys can kind of take a look at uh, your own leisure as well so one thing you do need to know uh, there is some pay to win items um this is kind of a pay to win game kind of uh, when it comes to certain materials and stuff you need for the true in game which i've yet to get to so i don't know what any of this shop stuff is this this doesn't benefit me in any way shape or form because quite frankly i don't know what's important and what's not right now but i do know from what i've been researching what i've been looking at that there is a lot of in-game material which is much much more quickly bought and it's actually time gated in the game so uh, there is that but don't let that detour you from playing this game. That's something you don't have to worry about until you're like in a complete elitist in this game, like a month in, right? If you kind of compare that to ESO, I mean, ESO is a little bit of pay to win too, you know, with the old mythic item system. And another thing I want to talk about is the guild system, which I think is freaking amazing. So let's go take a look at the guild. So 
I started a game called SAO Project. You guys can add me in game or whatever. I tried to make the emblem look like a uh, skull from Event Sevenfold, if you guys know what that is. But it's really cool. So it has all your guildmates listed, weekly tasks. So you do these tasks, you know, the more people you have, the more tasks you're completing, the more XP you get for your guild, the more you level it up. Well, you actually get access to researches and added benefits for your guild system. So this actually gives you like weekly tasks, for example. It tells you, you know, trade skills, a battle co-op, you can accept all these different quests to level up your guild. And once your guild is leveled up, you get added benefits as well, like increased resource gains, um, decreasing on mats cost, you know, when you're crafting your gear and uh, you know, your professions. So this actually gives you a reason to group up with your guild members other than just using them to craft items and spam in all your guild chats. Hey, I need this crafted. Who's going to help me out? You know, type of thing. So this is a very good system. I really wish ESO would implement to actually put in some guild perks. And I will reiterate again, I don't know uh, much about PVP. Um, we Once we uncover that, uh, I'll let you guys know more about that. There's all kinds of guides out there right now. People have played this for thousands of hours already you know, on the Korean servers or whatever. Um, but I'll let you guys know more as that rolls out uh, because I do want this to be a PVP kind of focused type of channel. We will be doing a lot of the chaos rating and stuff like that. By the way, if you're into the whole rating and PVE orient uh, orientation, of MMOs, well, this is definitely gonna be the game for you because it has some of the hardest raid content uh, in the world, uh, quite frankly. Some of the boss fights are by far the hardest and they absolutely eclipse World of Warcraft's mythic rating system. So without getting too in-depth on the complexities of this game, obviously you have your stat points, you know, for all your characters, just like the Elder Scrolls Online, you have engraving, which is that uh, this is in-game content, uh, you know, uh, your engravings, you get what's called like veins and certain amount of veins to give you a certain amount of perks and uh, yeah that's definitely a video for another day you have gems kind of do the same kind of like enchantments in the elder scrolls online the whole card system so and re it's really good because there's a whole recommended guide down here for your ability as well elder scrolls online has this but this is much much better and then also um if you want to have a different preset well guess what you can have a different preset of your abilities as well preset one and two i think for a third preset slot you have to get by it's like the elder scrolls online but uh yeah if you're in a situation like, hey, I need this sort of ability, this amount of AOE coverage, this amount of self-sustaining, I have preset one, and then if you need something else, well, there's preset two, and you can customize that accordingly, which is really cool, and you can do all this on the fly. Now, one really cool thing, I want to kind of mention this is kind of like a quality of life thing, but just because someone's attacking you, you can just mount up. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's it's really cool. The mounts are pretty incredible in this game now, and there's some, like, three-headed behemoths you get from purchasing the, the Founder's Edition. Mounts are really cool. They don't really offer any benefits. You don't have to waste all your time upgrading it. Uh, they do have like special abilities. I'm sure you can unlock uh, things later. But again, the mounts are pretty cool, but uh, also not necessary. But if you're getting attacked or whatever, you can just hop on this. There's no like in and out of combat type of thing to kind of... Yeah, you guys know how annoying that bug is, right? Another thing to talk about is pets. This is very similar to the Elder Scrolls Online uh, companion system. Um, these pets actually give you a bonus effects which you can re-roll at any time the better pets you have the better perks you can get so uh that's entirely up to you i don't count what you want to go with like a cute little cat you know he's cute he's named nero now just like elder Scrolls online there, there's titles uh there's mill titles there's fuel titles uh which is uh much different than the elder Scrolls online you just kind of have like one title and it, it's kind of one and done you prefixes suffixes really customize the title uh, the way you want um in addition you have a, a whole achievement list and some of the achievements list it's pretty crazy. I'll let you guys kind of look through this at your own leisure, but I really do like the way the achievement system is structured. It just makes you feel like it's inviting, gives you something to strive for, everything's easily here. I mean, unlike the Elder Scrolls Online, it's just kind of hit and miss, uh, kind of all over the place. Now, what is unique to Lost Ark compared to Elder Scrolls Online is that you actually have a rapport system. Now, this is equivalent to the World of Warcraft reputation system, and True in-game content, you had to build your rapport with certain factions to get certain items, you know, certain sets, you know, unlockables. Um, this is not something you necessarily have to worry about, you know, right off. I would actually suggest avoiding all this if possible. Your main goal is, well, at least my main goal is just to get to the level cap as quick as possible. And then you can go back and worry about all these rapport and reputation grinds, you know, come to the mounts. And you know, there's a bunch of cool stuff you can unlock here as well, emotes and all the fun stuff. And yes, this is really cool. There's a sheet music feature which uh, when you use your hearthstone or when you teleport between cities or whatever you can actually play a you know a song you know a, a different song i mean this is kind of like a little niche like quality of life thing but uh, i think it's a really cool system if only they could have it to where you could upload your own audio files and play like the favorite part of your favorite song when you're teleporting uh, between the nodes uh that would be cool 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video on comparing Lost Ark to The Elder Scrolls Online. My final verdict is that I really don't know enough about the game so far to make an educated decision on truly which one is better. But let me tell you, the first five hours of playing this game, I've had an absolute blast. I hate quest grinding. I hate pitch quests. This does not feel like that at all. The combat is real. It's lively. It's engaging. It's beautiful to look at. And quite frankly, guys, it, this is an amazing game. Okay. Give it a shot. It's free to play, which is the best part about it. You don't need a craft bag. You don't need any sort of subscription. And yeah, just enjoy yourself with it, guys. So when it comes to new player experience, this has been absolutely amazing for me. I've been learning a lot with the in-game guides. And when you compare this to Elder Scrolls Online, it's a no-brainer. Like this game is so much better compared to the Elder Scrolls Online when it comes to the new player content and the whole leveling system. I'd much rather do this than grinding in Sky Reach or Black Rose Prison in the Elder Scrolls Online. So this has been my noob take on Lost Ark versus The Elder Scrolls Online. I will let you know more as it develops over the coming weeks on my personal experience and what I find out to be good information for you guys. So if you like anything you found in this video, I would appreciate a like and sub and I will catch you all in the next one. And before you go though, before you tune out guys, please tell someone you love them. Have a great day and peace.